Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Renderman tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the Pixar Surface Shader and we're going to be diving into diffuse and specular controls. Um, so this can be used as a bit of an introduction to the shader and how you can control it to create a wide variety of different surfaces for your objects. Now it's worth noting, shaders should be considered a material. So what something is made out of, sometimes that information will contain color um, but most of the time we're just talking about the surface qualities things like diffuse, specularity, bump, subsurface scattering those sorts of things are the material when you start putting images onto a model those are textures sometimes you can control the color of your material um, in its base elements however when we're talking about textures make sure you don't confuse them with materials so today we're talking about materials and to, do, and to work with materials, we will need some geometry, which we already have here. I've got a plane on the ground, a sphere, which we'll be applying our material to, and I've just got a three-quarter light set up. So the first thing we want to do is select our object that we want to apply our material to, and click this button here. This is your Pixar surface. If you right-click, you'll get a few other options. Um, some of the deprecated ones are P Pixar Disney, if you're looking at old content, but we're going to stick with Pixar surface. This is the uh, shader that you will use for 90% of everything you do with RenderMan. So if you look in the attribute editor now in Maya, you'll see that it's actually created that shader. And if we bring up the hyper shader editor, we can go in and edit it a bit easier. So I'm going to dock that on the right hand side there just to make it a bit easier to see and map that out so I'm not going to use the it preview for this I'm just going to use the viewport renderer so you'll see that this is the situation we've got here with our um, object and you can just barely see the ground possibly um, I've got it set to a fairly dark color though so we don't get a lot of um, light bounces from it affecting the way our shader looks so the first thing we'll do is selecting our surface um, material you'll notice you get two nodes when you create it you get the material itself and this is where all your main parameters are and then you get the shading group this is where you'll connect your displacement um, displacements up to and um, if you're using volumes you can connect them up here as well but by default they'll already be connected and you don't have to worry too much about that so the sections we'll be looking at are these lobes and the lobes are these drop downs so we're looking at diffuse and specular and these are the primary ways that we affect our materials so the first thing you can do is you can change the color obviously you can see that i've got some here already on the hot shelf that's because i was messing around with this so any color that you select will be saved to the most recent so if i go green there you'll see that it appears there now i'm going to stick with that reddish color that i had though because i quite like that so you'll see you have a couple of sliders here, a gain slider, and this is going to control the gain, which is the apparentness of the diffuse. So when you go down to nothing, you'll see that you'll just be barely able to see the silhouette there. Sometimes you will reduce the gain on the diffuse channel to nothing, particularly if you're using the glass lobe, because you want to make this look like glass for a light bulb or something like that. But a lot of the time you'll have it at 1.0 or thereabouts. Roughness will control the apparent roughness of the surface now this is kind of difficult to see in a uh, diffuse but essentially what it's doing is you can see now that our highlighted areas are very close to the values of our non-highlighted areas and the saturation is very consistent throughout when it's not diffused or when it's not rough then it's considered a fairly smooth uh, diffused surface so with the roughness high you can imagine lots of micro bumps on your surface that are capturing the light and stopping it being reflected back as a nice um, intenser point. Under our advanced tab um, we've got a couple of options. Exponent and bump we're not going to worry about because I'll cover bump mapping in the in a bump mapping tutorial uh, but double sided is a useful one. If we put a, another piece of geometry in the scene all right, so I've got this plane that I've just created. I'm going to select it and hold down right click and assign to, uh, to ob object and that will allow this to be uh, now the same color as our sphere, which I've hidden. If we have a look at the back side of it, you can see that it's basically dark. So you'll see with the transmit gain set to 1.0, we will get this color transmitted directly through our subject. And if we pop another light on the other side, you'll see that the backside is actually a combination of this gray which is being transmitted 
and I'll just remap that so we're only looking at that and not the light options and uh, the and the red because we're using the diffuse color from the other side so even when we look at this side now that you'll see that because it's double-sided each side is getting this transmit color so we can tra change the transmit color to be green for example and you'll get a mixture of the two if you're doing something like paper or anything that's got, sort of got a little bit of transmission like even leaves things like that um, trans double-sided and transmitting color can be an easy way to achieve that we're going to set trans uh, double-sided off though for now and we're just going to focus on our surface material now we'll have a look at the specularity essentially the, what this is going to do is it's going to make the surface look like it's shiny like it's got a clear coat gloss of paint so You've got a couple of options under the specular, uh, primary specular lobe and it, just as a note the primary specular and the rough specular are exactly the same uh, the rough specular is just used as a blend so if you want some extra specularity at a different sort of um, quality then you can blend them together but we're just going to stick with the primary specular now so uh, for now mode you can set to artistic or physical this is going to be a more scientific approach um, but for the sake of ease we're going to stick with artistic as it's fairly easy to use so what we'll start by doing is increasing the face color to be white and you'll see now that we're getting a specular reflection of our light which is circular as you reduce the face color the specularity will start to go away and this kind of acts like a gain knob so for now we'll keep that at 1.0 and you'll see that we've got our specular highlight and we're getting a little bit of ground reflection because it's just bright enough that it's picking it up. The edge color is going to reflect this color that you've selected at a 90 degree angle to the camera perpendicular to the light. Now that sounds confusing but what I'll do is I'll just line this up here like that. You can see the edge color of the sphere is uh, red at the moment. Okay, it turns out this is a little bit harder to show than I had anticipated, but um, what we'll do is if we just reduce our face color down, you'll start to see the red blend in a bit more, and you'll notice it particularly on the specular highlight there. If I take that all the way out, our specular highlight will be replaced by the edge color, and you can see that the edge color is really only affecting the edge of that specular highlight. Having an edge color can be useful when you're trying to simulate something like a metal, so for example if we use actually more maybe a very lightly saturated yellow and then we change our diffuse color to be a darker color we'll get this metallic looking ball and it's very likely that this won't come through on youtube but you get a very soft edge of yellow highlight starting to become apparent um, on your metallic surface and that just helps it make a little bit more believable um, generally it is a good idea when you're working with colors just to add a little bit of saturation of a color um, even if it's just barely visible it just helps liven up your color scheme and your scene in general we'll turn the edge color off for the moment though and we'll look at roughness now roughness is pretty straightforward we talked about it a little on a little bit on diffuse basically it's like if we have this roughness set to zero it's perfectly polished ball however um, we'll just increase the grayness of that a little bit however if we increase the uh, roughness it's like we're making this ball a lot more uh, sanded over like you've scuffed it up a whole lot and you can increase it a whole lot and you'll get to something that's fairly rough looking and talking about roughness and specular highlights the specular model is something that you'll um, see a big difference in once you start adding roughness so at the moment it's set to Beckman if we set it to GGX it's going to give our specular highlight a, no a nice soft fall off and this is really good for metals um, so if you're trying to make again a metallic sort of looking object having that soft fall off and having it f the fall off filled by a nice soft color can actually really help your, me uh, your metals to look a little bit more believable an isotropy is going to control your specular highlights this is the easiest way to describe it without getting scientific basically it's going to squeeze them in one way or the other so you can see as you go into the negatives it makes it more horizontal uh, sorry vertical and then the opposite direction will make it more horizontal and for this one we won't worry about shading tangent or bump because we'll cover bump in a separate tutorial double sided you already know about from the diffuse lobe and um, that will pretty much cover the basics of it 
The one thing worth mentioning for them is that all of these values can be controlled by maps. So what you want to do is, say for example, you want your um, roughness to be controlled by a map. So we can create a random noise, say like by using a vor noise, pxr vor noise, and we can run the float, which is the result f. And this is just going to give a value from zero to one. And we can run this into this white input here and it'll give us every single input that we have. If you can see the input here, you can just go straight into it. But if you can't find it, a good way to go is just directly into there. We will run this into the specular roughness, however. And now you can see that the roughness has changed quite a bit. And we can increase the frequency of this. So you can start to see the roughness has now got a pattern to it. And you can see how using this will make your surfaces look a look a little bit more believable. We can further control your um, how much this affects it using intermediary nodes like an HSL and things like that. But I'll go into that in more complicated shading networks. I've got a lot of previous tutorials. If you're getting starting to get more comfortable with the shading networks, you can go and check those out and those are likely to help you out um, with setting up the more complex networks. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.